Hey everybody, Nate here from WASD20. Welcome back. Today, Adventures in Mapping, Aronoff. Adventures in Mapping is a series where I take a recently finished commissioned map and I take you through the process of how I made it, from concept to finished product. Aronoth in particular is a map that is very special to me, so I'm particularly excited for this one. So let's pull back the curtain and take a look at how this map came to be. So first off, in case you didn't know, Aronoth is the world of Matt Click from the YouTube channel A Fistful of Dice, and it is also now a published setting over at AbsoluteTabletop.com. So Absolute Tabletop has put out several sep supplements in the realm of Aronoth, and uh, they commissioned me to do a map about a year ago, and um, got a couple supplements here. Just got the new Stone Rift supplement in the mail uh, about two days ago, so I'm really excited to be taking a look at that. That's coming to the channel very soon. Um, and Aronoth is also the world that the Provokers played in. Provokers is a pretty well-known campaign that I've been a part of, and uh, it's an amazing place, so I'm really excited. I was thrilled when Matt asked me to collaborate with him on this map, and I'm excited to show you the process of how it came to be, starting with the very first pictures Matt sent me as concepts for what he was looking for from an Aronoth map. So this is the humble beginnings of the Aronoth map, uh, Aronoth map from Matt. Here we go. So there you have it. These are two images that Matt sent me in, whoop, let me go. Okay, so this one was made in August of 2015. Uh, and I think he sent these to me sometime in the fall of 2015 or winter. And I started working on it in December of 2015. So it's been a long time coming here. And uh, this video has been a long time coming too. But you can see uh, the shape of the continent there in one of them. And the other one has the regions that, are, uh, that he wanted present. As well as the two continents labeled. Uh, I might be saying them wrong, but Verglas and Ostras, I think are how you say those. And uh, those are the two continents. And within those continents, there are several little regions. So these are just some rough ideas. This itself is something like, I think Matt said, the third or fourth iteration of the Aronoth map and what the world would be. Um, it's a world that he started way back and has gone through lots and lots of transformation to get to where it is now. Pretty solidified now that he's published some books there. I think that helps solidify things. So uh, that was cool. Uh, just to show you here, this is the rough kind of concept for the map that Matt had. Going forward here. A little closer look at the shape of the coastline. Now in this one you can see that there was one other reference that I used uh, for this map and that was a map of the western southlands which is this pretty small region of the overall world um, and this map was made by John Pintar who's a guy that Absolute Tabletop has collaborated with quite a bit and he made this map as a gift to Matt because he was just such a big fan of the Provokers and uh, so this was way back and uh, just this little region where the provokers were adventuring. And so this is a picture where I was trying to point out to Matt, is, is this this? <laughs> this one is my very first uh, drawing. You can see the date there, 12-24-15. So Christmas Eve of 2015, I uh, sent this over to Matt and uh, asking for feedback on the general shape. Uh, he liked it, but one thing he did say is that he had had several times pointed out to him that Aronoth looked a little bit like Westeros. Uh, and so here's a map of Westeros you can see uh, and you can see some resemblance there and part of that is just it's kind of hard to avoid when you have two continents on top of each other connected by a narrow land bridge but there are quite a bit of uh, but there is quite a bit of resemblance here and he thought I don't know what do you think should we change that and I said yeah I think we can change it a little bit I don't think we have to worry about it too much um, any resemblance is coincidental but uh, so we did go about tweaking it a little bit so you can see here in this one on the left I uh, changed the shape, especially of the top continent, moved the bottom continent over to the right a little bit, and the top one over to the left and down, and uh, trying to just vary it a little bit from the Westeros map. So this one, I actually drew it up in GIMP just because I was finding myself erasing so much, but at some point I decided, you know what, I think really, for my technique, if I really want to get this map as good as possible, I feel a lot more comfortable doing some of, this, uh, some of the basic line work on paper and so then I went and transferred it back on the paper in this sketch and started actually this one now I, I put it back in GIMP and was just kind of coloring in different regions just as a sort of uh, key for myself and to check with Matt 
on what he thought of uh, mountains, forests, and deserts, and other kind of things that I was labeling and asking questions about, just to make sure I'm getting placement of things where he wants them. Now, for a lot of this, I did use uh, this reference document, and this is something that Matt sent me, and he's probably adjusted it since then, but um, this has the domains from north to south for Verglas, the features for Verglas, and then Ostris, same thing. So this was really helpful for me just in deciding, okay, what is this particular region going to look like on a map? And what sorts of features do I want to make sure I include here? I didn't include all of them, uh, but you know, some things it made more sense to label and make sure that they are represented on a map than others. So anyway, this was just kind of a helpful process for me to just visually um, make sure I'm getting things placed right. Here is a kind of a zoomed in look now as I'm starting to label the different regions and just again checking with Matt, everything looking like it's where you want it to be. He was giving feedback here and there. We tweaked some things and changed some things. Uh, but you can see here I'm also starting to draw some guides and I'm starting to think about permanent placement of this text. And that's where I ran into another challenge. I decided, you know, I want to push myself on this one. And I, I try to do that on most of my maps, really try something new and push myself to make a better map than I have before. And one of the things I thought is, Matt, I think I want to try digital text on this. I think it will really polish the map and bring it up to a higher level of professionality. I just think it might be more appropriate for this if the, if the map is going to be published. And so I ended up eventually erasing all that text and uh, just doing it digitally, which we'll take a look at very soon. But here's another progress shot. You can see now I've started the ink. Uh, I've got my coastlines in place for the most part. I've got my floating islands up there, Viator. Uh, starting to lay down some forests, swamp, hills. No mountains yet in this one. And I'm kind of lacking in some progress shots here. I didn't take too many pictures along the way. But you can see that this one has the mountains now, forests. It's got pretty much all of the basic geographic line work in place. Uh, I would still do a lot of touch up on the computer in GIMP later, but this is now the basic uh, ink work that was ready to be scanned in. Now this was originally done on 11 by 14 paper. Uh, and to get it all in one, I don't have a scanner big enough to scan that. So I use, just like I have in the past, Image Composite Editor, which is a free Windows program. Uh, check it out. You can easily stitch various scanned images together uh, with one click, pretty much. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it works really well. So got it all scanned in. Uh, this is the black and white version. And then the things that I was saving for the digital work, uh, shading, lots and lots of shading and detail, uh, especially on the mountains. Uh, and then and shading the water, making that darker. Um, the text, I have not done any text here, so I was gonna do all of that digitally. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at some of the digital work as it started. Uh, on this next slide, you can see that I now have the mountains shaded. Uh, this is not a great quality image, sorry. Uh, and I've got the water shaded. Uh, I've got the forests shaded. And I put the Aeronoth logo up there in the upper left. This is a logo that I actually made in, I think, the summer of 2015 for Matt. Uh, he just said, I'm thinking I need a logo, maybe something like this. And he put some logo up there. I can't remember what it was. I said, oh, yeah. And so I, I sketched something up in like five minutes. And I said, something like this. And he said, dude, that's awesome. I really like that. Uh, and I said, well, let me, let me work on it a little more. So I worked on it a little more and um, ended up sending him this logo. Um, and you can see it a little better on the final version here. Uh, but yeah, then of course, uh, Tim Carney got his hands on the logo and just photoshopped it up and made it all amazing. And guess what? <clears throat> shirt. Uh, I just got this in the shirt along with my copy of uh, the Stone Rift supplement all in one day. It was a good mail day, people. And um, yeah, Tim did amazing work on that logo just to make it look even more professional. Um, and uh, yeah. The, uh, the shirt I got, by the way, this is a t-shirt. Uh, they do have hoodies. I didn't order the hoodie. I'm just wearing it over a hoodie because it's Michigan and it's freaking freezing down in my basement right now. <laughs> so anyway, I put the logo up there and um, yeah, started and, continue and continued working on the rest of it. You can see that I do in this one have one little bit of text down there at Blood Hoof Step, just starting to test it out. Now, I have to give huge props to... Tim Carney from Tabletop Terrors and Absolute Tabletop for just giving me some advice on the text. 
Uh, Tim just has a great eye for visuals, uh, design, and art, and uh, just has really good gut reactions that I trust a lot when it comes to the look of things. And so it was really helpful to bounce ideas off him here and there. And uh, he's really good at Photoshop and was able to kind of tell me, give me some tips on how to do text in GIMP, although I did find that uh, that did not translate particu partic particularly well. Um, I really like GIMP. I'm still more comfortable in GIMP than I am in Photoshop, even though now I've owned Photoshop for about five months. I've hardly used Photoshop, that's part of the problem. But um, I've just really got to know GIMP well. However, I can easily see that when it comes to uh, text and the way that Photoshop handles it, it is a lot better. Um, it just makes it a lot easier uh, to do the text and also to, um, to make curving text that follows a path. Uh, it, it's just easier. In addition, on the final version of the map, I, I put a little bit of white um, background uh, behind the text, a little bit of cream color, I guess. You can see it most prominently on the uh, Aeronoth logo here, but I did it on all the text, and um, that process is a lot easier in Photoshop than it was here in GIMP. Is what I, it, that's my impression, at least, from messing with Photoshop a little bit. Now, I actually do want to open up the, uh, the GIMP file here, and we can take a look at that. Now, I've got several different versions here. This one happens to have everything pretty much merged into one layer, um, but we'll go, we will go take a look at the other one too. And this one is not the most high def, but it's definitely gonna be good enough. So you can see, uh, definitely have some of the uh, whiteness around the text here. Um, and we will also open up this one right here, which is a little more high def, so now you can see I can zoom in uh, a little better without it getting pixelated. Um, but this one, I don't think I have that, uh, the stroke around the text, that, that little cream background to kind of set it apart a little bit better as I do in the final version. Uh, one of the obstacles I had too is um, when they decided to do a poster, you can see this one here is not quite complete. I had to elongate it a little bit. So that was uh, a little bit of work. Uh, it took me a while to figure that out because I'd never done that before, but basically had to stretch a lot of it. Uh, now, I am going to get a little reflective here in terms of talking about things that I think could have been better on this map. Um, I put a lot of time in this map, a lot more time than I thought I would, and at some point I just had to finish it. Uh, but if I had more time, some of the things that I think I would, would have liked to do a little better, um, the border, I'm not super happy with it. It's, it's pretty good, but I think I would do something a little more thin and delicate. Maybe it's a little bit too bold. I'm not sure I'm totally satisfied with the corners, and I think I might even do that at some point and just send it to Matt to see what he thinks. Um, Matt, don't hold me to that. <laughs> One of the other things that I didn't like uh, all that much was these banners right here. Just didn't quite look right. They look a little bit too bright. Um, I, I didn't know how to get like a good texture on them. It's something I tried over and over again. I just thought, ah, it's just not looking right. Uh, but I would have liked to get that a little bit better as well. Um, this glacier here I wasn't super satisfied with. Drawing a glacier is hard. I don't know. I don't know what I would have done differently. Um, I just know I tried several things and I thought it just wasn't looking right. And I, I'm still not totally pleased with it. But it's good enough. Uh, one other minor nitpick here um, is I, I feel like I have each of the regions so compartmentalized. They're so kind of self-contained. Like Charwood is just this charred forest, and then Iridos is just plains, and Talmor is a swamp, and Bardoth is hills, and it just feels a little bit like I should have maybe blended those together a little more, the different terrain types, um, just to make give it a more organic, realistic feel maybe. Um, so anyway, that's just another minor nitpick, but anyway, I could nitpick all day. Um, I think it's helpful to be reflective and to think about what you can do better next time and always to be uh, self-critical so you can keep on improving. Um, yeah, but you know, I did my, the same uh, mountain shading technique that I've shown in other videos, the same uh, technique that I showed in a very recent one, I'll put a link to the description below, how to shade your mountains digitally. Um, you notice though I did not do the ridgeline technique that I did for example in the Valos map. I really just felt more confident in my ability to get a professional look with this individual peak method rather than with the ridgeline technique. Um, so I'm pretty happy with how they came out. There's certainly some imperfections here and there and little things, but you know I wanted it to still have my look of a hand-drawn map in a way. Uh, nothing super polished or hyper-realistic but still have the look of an old-fashioned 
hand-drawn map. So I think I achieved that, and uh, the response to it has been really positive. And also, it just feels really good to know that my map is even, you know, it's now printed in these books uh, alongside uh, John Pintar's map here of the Western Southlands. So that feels really cool. Um, they're selling posters of the thing now, and they were nice enough to send me a poster. Uh, so that was pretty awesome. I've got that frame, and you've probably seen it on the wall in the background in the past. But, yeah, overall, um, this map was a ton of work. Um, dozens of hours. Um, well, maybe two dozen hours. I don't know. I wasn't really keeping track. But it was a lot of time. But uh, it was a labor of love. Again, Aranoth is a place that I have... I've gamed in this place before. Uh, the Provokers, one of the... Really my first true consistent campaign that I played in. And, um, man, it's, it's an awesome place. So, go over to Absolute Tabletop, check it out. You can see I'm all Aeronothed up. You should get Aeronothed up, too. <laughs> all right, if you have any comments or questions, I always love to hear from you. Let me know down below. And uh, if you enjoyed this one, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And stay tuned for more. Make sure you're subscribed. Everybody take care. You'll see me again very soon.